Hey gang, it's Brian from FX Billiards. Today we are going to talk about a shot that to a lot of people is a major issue and there are legitimate reasons why. So let's get started. The shot is this. You have an object ball that is just barely, maybe about an inch or so, off of the rail. Now if you're shooting down the rail directly, it's a totally different ball game. But if you have an angle on this shot and you're shooting, let's say, from about a 30 degree angle, this is where the shot becomes an issue for a lot of players. And it becomes an issue for not just beginner players, but intermediate players and some slightly more advanced players. So we're going to talk about the mechanics of making and not making this shot because some of the things you're trying to do are keeping you from making the shot. So let's look at those things. Number one, this shot, if you are going to apply English to it, you are going to magnify the difficulty substantially. Now you will see very often an advanced player that say is playing that one and has to get on a ball down here, will shoot this shot with low left hand English to spin back down here to get to this six. That's all fine and dandy, but the problem is the difficulty level on that shot has magnified substantially. If the shot is here and all you need to do for whatever reason is to make the shot, get the English out of your game. For those of you who don't use the term English, we're talking about cue ball spin, side spin. The reason I say get it out of your game is because a lot of you, especially high intermediate players, learn to make cut shots like a 45 degree shot with outside English. This is the way we're taught to do it. As you move up, you're going to be making shots that look like this. With outside English, because most advanced players adjust for cut and deuce throw by throwing the ball towards the pocket. And what happens, one of the things that I notice that happens with high intermediate players is they see this shot and they treat it the same way. And theoretically, it is kind of the same thing. You're kind of throwing it towards the pocket. You want to reduce cut and deuce throw. But there is another way to reduce cut and deuce throw. So let's look at how you can do that. First off, Cut and deuce throw, for those of you who don't know, means that if I hit the ghost ball spot on this ball, the friction from those balls making contact actually sends the ball just about to the edge of the pocket. This is why on a lot of slow shots, players can hit the ghost ball perfectly and end up missing usually to the short side of the rail because that's where the cut and deuce throw throws you. It throws you to the short side. The friction of the balls rubbing together causes the shot to not cut as much as you anticipate. So that's what cut and deuce throw is. Now, two things happen. Low level players shoot the balls so fast that the cut and deuce throw doesn't quite take on as much meaning. Advanced players put outside English on it and intermediate players are working on whether or not they should put the outside English or hit it with a certain speed. But that's what cut and deuce throw is. The same thing exists on a shot like this, but if you put outside English on this shot, which is what I just did, by the way, to draw it back, draw the cue ball back here, if you put outside English on this shot, whether you're going forward or backward, you are increasing the difficulty. And if you don't put outside English on it, guess what happens? You end up going into the rail. So that's why a lot of you are shooting this shot and ending up hitting the rail. So how do you do it if you, hey, Brian, I can't put English on it. You're telling me I have to put English on it. What do we do? The number one tip that I can give you here on this shot is to adjust your speed. Now, what does that mean? It means that if you're coming off of this rail, let's assume you're hitting it well. So you're not off as far as your aim goes or anything like that, but you're coming short and hitting this rail each and every time you shoot it. That is cut and deuce throw most likely. We're again, assuming you're hitting it perfectly. How can you negate some of that? By picking up your speed 
just a little bit. So let's look at a couple shots. If I have this shot and I'm playing it down the rail and I'm going to shoot it, I'm going to guess this is about three miles an hour. You can see I can take it straight down the rail and make the shot. If I set up the same shot and now I reduce my speed and I will make every attempt to hit it in the exact same spot. If I reduce my speed, now you can see that I got a little bit of throw and hit this outside rail. So the bottom line is in order to adjust for the cut and deuce throw, don't apply English. All right, this is a lot of distance for you guys to be applying English on a shot that you're hitting that softly. You want to pick up a little bit of speed. If you pick up a little bit of speed, you can reduce the amount of cut and deuce throw. It is very rarely that I tell a student, hit the ball faster and harder. But this is one of those situations. And if you notice the difference in speed, it is very minor. You don't want to slam the ball because if you slam it, again, if you hit it perfectly and you slam the ball, what's going to happen is you lose the ability to rattle the ball in the pocket. So you need to have what they call the Goldilocks effect. You need to have the perfect amount of speed in order to make the shot, reduce the cut and deuce throw, and give you the benefit of being able to hit the pro side of that pocket and having it rattle in for you instead of rattling out for you. So work on your speed on these shots and let's look at something else. When I shoot that shot, particularly with a ball that is the same color or very close to the same color as the table, there's an interesting thing going on. The shadows that are landing on the table, let's assume you don't have like beautiful predator overhead lights that give you an even shadow drop on the table. The shadows that land on the table can hurt you as far as aiming this shot. Because it's close to the rail, the rail is giving you a shadow to shoot at, the, the ball itself is throwing shadows on the table. You don't always have a reference point, especially when you're shooting the solid balls. So be conscious of the fact that the shadows are going to lie to you sometimes. One of the next tips I'd like to give you is stand over here and see the shot. And you're going to say, Brian, you, you didn't stand over there and look at the shot when you shot it. I've got a 30 year head start on a lot of you. Okay, there's certain things you should probably be getting into your game and that I probably should keep in my game too, but I'm not just because I've got so much experience with it. But standing over here and taking a look at the shot line is invaluable. A lot of top players do this on any difficult shot. And if you don't think this is a difficult shot, shoot a few of them, okay? <laughs> You've even got some ammunition now. Shoot a few of these. But you have to keep in mind, sometimes the shadows are going to lie to you, especially when there's not a lot of contrast on the table. So get over here, give yourself a snapshot so that when you get over here, you will know, okay, that's where the ball starts, not theirs. Your eyes will lie to you all the time. A lot of the shots you're missing in pool are the result of your eyes lying to you. Let's look at something else. So what happens now? We are a good three feet almost from the shot that we had before. We're still off the rail by the same amount. We're dealing with the dark ball. We see our shot line. We want to shoot it down there in that corner pocket. We get down on the shot here, much longer shot. We're gonna pass the side pocket. We managed to make the shot. Why? Because I treated it the exact same way I did when my object ball is there. Do not let your distance on these shots cause you to change your mind about how you have to hit it. That was the same speed as I shot the other ones, okay? I don't care if you're here, here, there, or there. Treat the shot the same way. Now, 
your last tip of the day. When you have these shots and you say, okay, I saw Brian shoot it from here. He sent it down the rail. It was pretty much nice speed. And, oh wait, I can't make it. And then you shoot it again and you shoot it again and you shoot it again and you can't make it. Stop it. Stop shooting the shot from here. You need to have the shot, not even from here, but from here and then here and then here and then here. You move your cue ball and your object ball further and further away from the pocket when you are learning these shots. You have got to work your way out. Please guys, stop trying to do nine foot draw shots when you don't have a nine inch draw shot. Stop trying to do force follows if you don't have a follow shot. Stop trying to do eight foot shots down table with a cut on the rail when you don't have the 18 inch shot down table on the rail. You guys have heard me say it before because I used to play a lot of basketball. If you can't dunk a basketball on Tuesday, you probably can't dunk a basketball on Wednesday. Get yourself worked up to that pace and that distance progressively. You have got to do this, guys, because a lot of you give up on these shots because you're trying them from advanced player distances instead of intermediate player distances. So please, work your way out. And thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, definitely give us a thumbs up. It helps us out. Make sure you check out this video and don't forget to subscribe. If you're watching these videos for free and you're not subscribing, shame on you because you know where the right information is. Right here. Have a great day. I'll talk to you soon.